Welcome back to C Sharp for Beginner Series. In this tutorial, I will be discussing arrays. I hope you have looked at my earlier tutorials, five of them, which discuss installing C Sharp, compiling and running a simple application, understanding variables, data types, and assignments, understanding if switch, and the loop statements. The objectives of this lesson are arrays. I will discuss both one and two dimensional arrays. An array is a collection of variables of the same type. Arrays can have one or more dimensions. Arrays are convenient for holding related values. For example, daily closing stock prices. An array is a group of variables of the same data type and referred to by one common name. Why do we need an array? For example, if you want to store stock prices for 30 days, you will have to declare 30 variables. To handle such situations, you need arrays. You can store all the 30 values in one array or in one variable. Arrays also allow you to organize data in such a way that it can be easily accessed and manipulated. For example, if if closing stock prices for March 2010 are stored in an array, it is easy to compute the average stock price for that month in about less than five lines of code. Also, data stored in arrays can be easily sorted or searched. So here is an example of creating 1D array. Type is the base type, the type of data that the array will hold the size is the size of the array, the number of elements the array will hold. The new keyword builds the array and allocates the required memory. Once the array is created, its length is going to be fixed. Each item in an array is called an element and each element is accessed by its numerical index. As shown in the above illustration, the numbering begins with zero. The ninth element, for example, would therefore be accessed by index eight. Assigning array elements. In this example, we are creating an array of four elements and then assigning a value to each element. In a real world situation, you will probably read the stock prices from a database or a file. Accessing array elements. Here we are accessing the first and the third elements of the array. Keep in mind that the first element always has an index of 0 and the last element has an index of size minus 1, in this case 3. If you ever use an index outside of the range, which will be 0 to size minus 1, your program will crash. In C Sharp's terminology, it will throw an exception. Remember the stock prices array on the previous slide had four elements, which means its valid indexes were from 0 through 3, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Here I am trying to print the stock prices with an index of 4, which doesn't exist, which is out of bounds. So if you try to run your program in the interactive mode, it will go to the line which is causing this problem and it will throw an exception. It will bring up a message box or a dialog box like this and uh, tell you you know what went wrong. If you had already compiled this program and running that as an exe file, the program would basically crash. So make sure you always avoid putting an index which is outside of the range. Okay, let's take a side trip here. Uh, here is a class called the random class in C sharp which can be used for generating random numbers. And uh, without getting into a lot of details here, here is the recipe for doing it. So you create a random object, R, which is of the type random class, and then the next method for the random class takes two arguments, two integers. In this case, I have provided 20 through 30. What this does is, is gives me a random number between 20 and 29. When you run this example, 
you will get different random numbers, different numbers, but they would always be between 20 and 29. When you run the example on your computer, most likely the outcome would be different. In this case, the first number I got is 20, the last number I got is 29. Those numbers could have been anywhere between 20 and 29. So this recipe is used for generating random numbers. Here is another array example and I want to show you how you can use loops with arrays. So again I'm using this random object which I will use to generate random numbers. I have created an, an array called stock prices which has 30 elements all of the type integers and then I set up a for loop here which goes from i equals 0 to i less than the length of that array. This is a good way of setting up a loop for looking at or dealing with all the elements of an array. This will make sure that you know you never are outside the bounds of an array. 0 through the length. 0 through i less than stock prices dot length. So here I am filling the array with random numbers somewhere between 20 and 29. Then if I want to process these numbers I can use other for, another for loop. So if I want to print now all those 30 numbers I can set up a simple for loop again the for loop begins with 0 and ends at length minus 1 and what it's going to print is the number the day number in this case and the ending stock price for that day. Please run this example and uh, see the output that you get. Every time you run this example you're going to get a different output because you're going to fill in the array with different sets of random numbers. Creating a two-dimensional array. Arrays can have more than one dimensions. Here is an array with two dimensions. I'm using an array to store test scores for five tests for four students. So the one dimension is test the other dim dimension is students. Assuming that I already filled the array with the values to print Linda's score on test number four, this is the syntax I use. Scores, the first index is three, which is referring to column number four, test four. The second index is two, which is referring to third students, to the third student, Linda. And the output I get is 86. So that was a quick introduction to arrays. Next I'll be talking about classes and object-oriented programming.